Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. So, in this episode, we're going to be looking at all these little accessories that go into this LRDG uh, command car. Um, so there's a lot of lots of little bits and pieces, loads of details. Um, and once one of the things that really attracted me to this model is this type of accessorizing. Um, you know, you can do a lot of things, uh, a lot of little things, a lot of little details that really make uh, the model pop out. So, as I says in this episode, that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, so there's going to be a couple of techniques. There's one in particular I've uh, not tried before, so it's going to be the first for me. And that's painting um, wood grain into uh, wooden crates. I've not done that before, so it's going to be a learning curve for me. Um, um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be looking at. We also yeah, we're going to be looking at weathering uh, some of the kit as well, particularly uh, the jerry can. So we do some more chipping, uh, the same as we did on the vehicle. So without further ado, with me babbing on, let's get into it. Okay, so there's a lot of kit to uh, to get painted, and to make things a little bit easier, I've stuck everything uh, to uh, like stirrer sticks, uh, using uh, some blue tack or white tack, uh, and in some of the cases used a bit of masking tape, uh, you know, wrapped around the stick, uh, just to make things again a lot easier. And then, quite simply as always, just base coat it and uh, ready for some painting. So it's the same as we do the vehicle. Um, we painted it in a, a rust colour using the same Comart uh, Dark Rust. Spraying a light layer of, uh, or used uh, Desert Yellow and Buff. Um, and then with a bit of water, after that's dried obviously, uh, chip away uh, some of that paintwork and to give it that uh, nice worn uh, chip looking effect. Now with some of the other jerry cans, um, I did paint some in the green. You can see there just just a white one. Um, I've seen these kicking about with um, some really random paint jobs for whatever reason. I suppose it usually marks out something in particular. Uh, but uh, moving on to the uh, fuel drum, I've done a little bit of uh, basically fuel dribble uh, using some uh, AK's uh, fuel stain. Uh, I started off some really uh, thin layers, um, mixing it, sorry, watering it down uh, with uh, what spirit, uh, and then builds up the layers, and uh, basically working around the uh, the main cap, and then doing a little bit of a dribble uh, down the side. Uh, afterwards, uh, I would have uh, matte varnished it and then put another. Uh, light coat over the top of that to give us a mix of between sort of some old uh, fuel stain and something a bit more recent. So with uh, rucksacks, uh, kit bags, anything that's sort of uh, material, um, I've based pretty much all these roughly, um, you know, using the same paint. Some were used uh, with a little bit more extra buff other cases a little bit more of that desert yellow and basically after that I um, used the dark uh, desert yellow to sort of recess everything to give that sort of sense of depth in the material um, I apply this in, again in relatively light layers um, you know just to, just to work away up because we don't want to go in too heavy and then have to try and um, you know cover that all back up and afterwards, use the same process, uh, using straight up buff, uh, just to highlight uh, all those areas and to sort of give that sense of a bleach material. Okay, so for crates, um, this is actually something new to me. I, I thought I'd uh, give this one a go. Uh, so basically I, I based uh, anything wood um, all the same colour and then uh, with a mix of uh, sienna, um, umber and burnt umber I uh, slapped that all on um, a few varying shades just before it's starting to dry out 
with a fairly uh, stiff brush. Just run across where all the wood grain uh, is or should be in the case of this crate here, uh, which will give you that you know wood grain effect, which I thought actually worked out pretty well. So like I said, as you can see, I did a uh, mix uh, of colors, uh, but I thought just to try and give uh, a bit of depth, and this was something again I was trying, um, I used a bit of uh, Tamiya's uh, accent panel liner using the dark brown uh, to sort of coincide with the uh, wood. And I think again that worked out quite well, uh, giving some depth to that wood. Uh, so yeah, so a, a process I think I'll be trying again. And I also did the same uh, on uh, the weapons as well. Any bit of wood on there was done with exactly the same process. Sticking with the small arms, I'm gonna make some rifle slings. Now this is relatively easy, but admittedly fiddly at the same time. Um, so all you need uh, is some uh, masking tape, uh, cut them roughly uh, to the right size of the buckles that are on the weapon. And in the case of these, just to make them uh, a little bit more um, 3D, if you like, um, I've just basically doubled over uh, the ends uh, of the uh, rifle sling, uh, just to give you that sort of more of effect that there should be a buckle uh, at the end. Uh, I mean, if you're feeling adventurous, or it wasn't admittedly, uh, you could just use, uh, you know, some wire, uh, bend it round against the same sort of size uh, and feed it through. Uh, but just to attach it, it's quite simple uh, using um, some super glue, which of course does make this uh, process can be a little bit um, lengthy. Uh, but in the case of this rifle, uh, it's going to be stowed away, so the sling is going to be quite taut. So basically, as you can see, I just sort of roughly measured it uh, to the length I wanted to the, to the rifle stock, uh, cut that extra um, bit of masking tape off and then again super glue it, nice and simple. So again, to try and add a little bit of variety in what's going on. Uh, with this one in particular, I decided to sort of wrap uh, the sling uh, around the weapon. Uh, so leaving the first bit that you've uh, attached to uh, dry, um, I wrapped it round. As you can see, I dabbed a little bit of super glue, uh, wrapped it round onto that, and again, let that dry uh, for a little bit. Uh, and then again, uh, attach it to the uh, rifle stock. So in the case of having it on a figure, uh, this can be also uh, a little bit fiddly. Uh, so what I did was I roughly put the weapon to where I think it should be uh, with a bit of blue tack and uh, stick the uh, rifle to his back and then quite simply do exactly the same process uh, as I did before uh, with the fact that it being masking tape it also helps you uh, you know stick it to the figure uh, and work your way uh, around his body uh, from the top of the rifle down to the rifle stock so then that's all that's left to do is paint the rifle slings uh, in the case of this one, uh, I'll actually be painting this all completely separate, uh, so I haven't f purposely glued this to the figure just yet. So on the Lewis gun that sits at the back of the vehicle, I'm doing a slightly different chipping uh, technique on this. 
Uh, I'm using AMS uh, products. Um, basically, this is sort of a reverse chipping technique. So you actually paint the colour on, and then with uh, a little bit of water, uh, chip away. Uh, what the point of this is, what I wanted to do is, is a lot of these uh, weapons sometimes were painted in the colour of the theatre that they're working in, and particularly with the heavy machine guns, these get chipped uh, quite a lot. So I based it in the same colour as the vehicle, uh, chipped away uh, this sort of uh, light grey, uh, sorry, dark grey colour, um, and just to give you that uh, sort of worn effect look. I also decided to put a bit of a cover uh, around uh, the weapon. So using, again, uh, a dried bit of baby wipe, uh, in the case of this, reactivated it with some water, uh, which helped me uh, position this uh, onto the barrel of the weapon. Now, admittedly, I'm not 100% sure if this is actually accurate. I think I've seen it, but I'm not 100% sure, but I just thought, you know, it, it adds a little bit of, uh, a bit of character to just, you know, standard weapon. I'm sure you agree with it, right or not, it does look pretty cool. So sticking with the same material, you can also make all sorts of things um, like tarpaulins or you know folded up uh, bits of material. Um, so what I did with this one in particular is, as you can see there's a bit of tin foil at the bottom, uh, I placed that onto where I wanted it on the model uh, and I actually uh, soak this in PVA glue uh, with uh, some water so it's quite uh, thin. Let it dry um, and then obviously uh, go straight to paint. Uh, to add a bit more variety uh, in, the, in what's in the vehicle um, and kit being from all over the place, um, I decided to paint a few bits and pieces uh, in good old uh, sort of olive uh, drab colour. Again, like I said, just to add that little bit of variation uh, rather than it being all the same colour. Also made a few roll mats using the same techniques. So then that's all that's really left to do is basically figure out where you want all your kit to go. Now I didn't use uh, everything uh, that was with in the kit. Uh, of course, as you see, I, I did make a few of my own uh, bits and pieces. Uh, also added a few uh, little extras in there as well from uh, previous kits. Uh, so you, you might be able to see there's an MG34 uh, and a German helmet um, as well. Uh, but I says it's, uh, it depends on how you want it. I mean, some of these vehicles were stacked high of bits and pieces of kit. Um, but I decided to stick uh, to a little bit of uh, minimalism. So there we go guys, that's the vehicle basically complete. Um, so there's cool, uh, lots of cool little details uh, in there that says really, really make it stand out. Uh, I'm well chuffed with this one. Uh, a lot has turned out really, really well for me on this one, so I'm very chuffed with it. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, next, we'll be looking uh, at the figures. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, but also again, it says if you've enjoyed the video, Please like and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Instagram as well. And as always, I'll catch you next time.